All right, now we're going to refactor our GraphQL schema to match our Mongoose model. And then we're going to be able to query the field. So what we're going to do, we're going to change this ID to a type ID. Username is going to stay a string. Email is going to be a string. Google ID is going to be a string. I'm going to leave that novel. Um, image URL is going to be a string. Created on. It's going to be a string. videos we'll just say a string for now. I think that covers all the fields. Oh password. Oh uh, we're not gonna put the password here. We don't well, there's no reason why we need that going to the front end. Only coming from the front end. So save that. Start up our server again. Fresh. I'll show you something you can do inside of GraphQL as well. You can name our query. So we'll name this get user. Let's do all users first. Now we can get an ID, username, email, image URL, Google ID, created on. Videos. There we go. Let's get an ID, username, email, image URL, got our Google ID, got created on, got videos. But we got an error. String cannot represent an array value. Might have been the videos. Coming as an empty array. Yep. Okay. That takes care of that error. The videos is a, an array on the database, so we have to represent this array in the schema. So now we've got an ID. Some one of the mongoose generated IDs. So now we can query. Get user. Pop in that ID. Get all those same fields off of get user now. Now it gives you the choice since you named it up top. And you can name it anything you want, it doesn't have to be the same name. So 
expected type int. Okay, we gotta change one thing. This is not an integer anymore. ID. Say that. That's a good reason why you go through the trouble of testing stuff out in graphical. Catch all your errors. Easy to debug. Well, now I've got it. So we're looking good. I think uh, next video we can get cracking on starting the front end. Uh, we still got some time in this video, so might as well get a, get a jump on it. We'll close down on all this stuff. And we're going to npm install dash g create react app. And then we're just going to run create react app space and then we're going to say client for the directory although you can name the directory anything you want the second argument here or well i guess the first argument to create react that react app is the folder you want to put it in so we'll hit enter and then it's going to take a few minutes to do that but in general i like to build my apps this way i like to get a good solid chunk of the back end set up um, before I start playing around with front end, you know, take care of the at least some of the basics. There's more we can add. We're going to come back to the back end, of course. There's plenty more we're going to do there. But I just like to get a good foundation for, for the application. And it looks like great React Act's done its thing. So, you notice we have two separate package JSONs now, two separate projects, really. So, what I'm going to do is a little trick here. Do the client, say npm run start dash dash prefix client. That's going to let us run React from the outer workspace. We don't have to go into that workspace to do it. I'm going to install another package. Called concurrently. And that's going to let me run both projects at the same time. So I'm going to have to create that client script again. So npm run start dash dash prefix client. Then I'm going to have my start script be concurrently to use escape characters here. npm run server, npm run client. Just like that with the escape characters. Now, npm start should run both things, both the React server and the backend server, with one command. Front end should be running. There it is. See you in the next video.